Uh, uh, so I tried to do a video so many times yesterday and I just, I get frustrated. I get frustrated because as I'm doing the video, I'm understanding so many things that are disturbing. Sometimes when you're talking about something, you come to self-realizations. It's so sad. You know, I talk about letting our education system letting us down. No, we let our education system down. I find myself filled with a disturbing feeling of hate. Let's call it what it is. For these white supremacist, and I'm not talking about just the Christian religious right supremacist types. I'm talking about you know, Jews will not replace us. Everybody dressed in the same fucking khaki pants and shirt and shit like it's their club. And, you know, you, you start to understand, sadly, how easy it is to corrupt a human soul, including mine. I don't like, I don't like hating it destroys my calm. It destroys my, my, my place in the universe, you know? My, my zigs start to zag, you know? It's just... I don't like feeling that way. I don't want to hate those people. I want to understand them. And so that maybe in some possible way I could change them. And then that turns to hate when I realize that that's truly who they are. Their souls, their quantum selves, that's who they are. Although they are completely unaware that they have a quantum soul that's going to reside somewhere else when they die. That this place is temporary, as Einstein called it, a persistent illusion. I've spent my entire career on YouTube talking about when I died and the results of that and what I'm supposed to be telling people, et cetera, et cetera. But I understand that some people were just volunteered to fill that void, man. They volunteered to be hate-filled animals, and I resent them for it. I resent them for their choice. Then I look at my own life and I see how many fucked up mistakes I made. And I'm like, yeah, well, you're not perfect either, dick. You don't have any room to fucking talk. And I realize how much I've changed over the last, well, since I met my wife. Since I had my last vision from my death. Ever since then, I've been a different person. I had a relative come over who was believing all the weird shit about the South Pole wall, or you can't go to the South Pole, and, and fucking Donald Trump's a, a, a genius businessman, da 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 and, and, and I found out the way he got that was listening to his brother's bullshit on Fox News 24-7. And so I end up resenting him for fucking his little brother up because he wants to hate. And then I realized, well, you know, he had half his brains blown out. They said he'd never talk, he'd never walk, he'd never, he'd never, he'd never. And he proved him fucking wrong every, at every corner, man. Okay? The guy hunts one arm with a bow 
by holding the, the arrow with his teeth. He plays golf better than most people I know with just one fucking arm. <laughs> but he, it changed him. It changed him. And I tried to tell him, dude, stop watching Fox News. I took him for a thousand bucks last election. I told him Donald Trump's going to get his ass handed to him. He was absolutely convinced that Donald Trump was going to rule the fucking world. And I was like, I, I love you. I love you. You're my family member. There are very few people that I care about more than you. And you know how smart your uncle is. You understand the things that I've been involved with in my life. You understand the accomplishments I've done in my life. You should be looking up to me. But instead, you're listening to fucking Sean Hannity. And it just made me angry that he would take their word over my word. And I know that's where the anger comes from. It's because I want them to understand the truth of the world. And they won't let me tell them. They won't let me tell them. And even if I do tell them, it, it, they won't listen because they want what Sean Hannity is saying. They want it. He wants it. They want it. That whole, they want to hate. And they don't see it that way. They don't see it that way. Um, you cannot argue with stupid and you cannot have a discussion with ignorant. I had a friend, the, I, I talk about him often, my friend that I lost, Steve. Because... I watched the hate grow in him. He was a Rush Limbaugh, was his fucking idol, man. And the things that came out of his mouth as a supposed Christian disgusted me. Disgusted me. I was like, man, you're just so full of fucking hate. And he got all angry with me because he said, oh, you, you're, you're too many haters on YouTube or turning you into a hater. I'm like, no, I said, I can ban those people. I can't ban you. You're my friend. I'm just trying to explain to you what you sound like. He got all fucking angry, and I'm like, okay, well, this, this is the second time I'm telling you you can leave my house. You don't need to be here any longer. His wife died, and so we kind of got back together. But it didn't change him. He would come to my house and drink fucking beer until I would be passed out. And then he would drive home at night on a, on a windy fucking road. And I thought, you know, one, one day he's going to kill somebody and I'm going to be responsible. And I'm going to feel responsible because he left my house after drinking fucking two six packs and drove home at night. And he wondered why his business was failing. I'm like, dude, you smell like stale beer from 10 feet away. And people do not want you working around their house. I don't care how professional your fucking name looks or what your equipment... Uh, yeah, you look professional, but dude, you smell like a fucking alcoholic. And this is why your business is failing. You're, you're never getting any repeat customers. No one wants to sign up with you because of that. And... You know, that all that did was build more resentment. It took me a long time to face my fuck ups. They were just as bad as anyone else's. I was just as fucking guilty of being a fucking dickhead as anyone else. Even to today, I can be such a prick. But I also realize that I, that I tell the truth. I'm kind. I'm generous. I'm caring. I'm loving. I take care of all those people around me that I care about. Uh, that I value friendship and truth and integrity now more than anything else in the world. And that I'm truly rich in my life and happy. 
I often wonder, why do I do this to myself? Why do I go on YouTube and talk about this part of mankind that basically is disgusting? Their souls are filthy dirty with hate and malignancy. And then I understand it's what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be doing it, as well as admitting to the world that I'm a fuck up. If you can't do that, if you can't admit your mistakes, you can never forgive yourself. You can never justify forgiving yourself. There's no reason. If you haven't learned from your mistakes, right? I embraced my other lives. I look at, I've said this before, I look at my life as if living three separate lives. Like 20, 40, 60. From zero to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60. And now after 60 is when I had all my epiphanies and finally came to face all of my truths in my life. I finally faced the reality of my near death. Um, so many things came around, including meeting my wife, which was one of the most important moments of my life because she helped guide me out of the turmoil that I was in. She's probably half the reason I'm on YouTube. Wanting that Ferrari, wanting a yacht, why? You know, when I see some guy who's got to have a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, a Honda Fit just will not do. I understand how weak and sad his soul is. I used to want those things. I don't anymore. I'd like to have one that I could go beat the holy fuck out of at the Nürburgring for a week and then give it back and come back home. I don't want the worry of ownership. I don't want to own it. I just want to beat the shit out of it. Yeah, I'd like to go on a vacation on a big private yacht. But then here's your yacht back. I'm done. I'm going to go home now and be with my friends and family, which are the most important things, not this fucking boat. But there are people that without those things, they're nobody. They have nothing to talk about. There's no substance to their soul. And this is why I've tried to do suicide prevention for the last 15 years, because I understand even the people that I don't like, that they're supposed to be here and that they're important that they play their role. They play their role from beginning to end. And it's usually not, believe it or not, it's usually not the fucking assholes that do it because they're too self-centered and maniacal in their souls to commit suicide. It's this... It's the person who looks, wakes up in the morning and sees the world for what it really is. And they just don't want to fucking be here anymore. And that's a selfish choice. You're forgetting about all the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people your life will have an effect on if you just stick around and complete your life to, the, to its intended end. Suicide's not allowed. This is where the multiverse, things like this, this is where it comes in because it all makes sense to me. People are like, oh, is a multiverse not? No, it's not. Yeah, yeah. In a way, there is a multiverse because we each all inhabit our own universe. We're all in our own special piece of time space. And for me, the multiverse makes all kinds of sense, except it's not a multiverse. We're, we're all, each individual sentient mind in the universe is all part of its own separate little piece of time space. If that's a multiverse, so be it. And if you commit suicide, you go to that place where I was, and sooner or later, sooner or later, you will 
after being there for a period of time, you will come back and try it again and again and again and again and again. And I often wondered, did, did, how many times did it take me? Because I know how stubborn I am. Millions? I don't know. But I know that I'm out of sync with the universe. And that, you know, you, you, you simply, when you decide you're going to go back, you simply go back to the same day you were born. You go to the same grade school. You live in the same house. You read the same book. Everything is identical, the same, right up to that moment of your bad decision. And sometimes it takes help to get past that moment, which I believe is what my wife is to me. And I'm hoping that I am to others, that you're supposed to be here. I know it's hard. Trust me, time and this fucking environment will take you soon enough. You want your death to be as it was intended to be. Not as you want it to be. You don't have that right. It's the only thing you don't have a right to. You can change your life anytime you want. It's amazing how we created an existence for ourselves. We created all this information, yet the information can be altered right now. I should write a book. I keep talking about writing a book, but I'm such a shitty fucking writer. But now with all these writing assistants, I, I may give it another shot. I may try again. I know that I could do a 25-hour video on YouTube about my near-death experience and only cover a small part of it, how it's affected me, what I've learned, how I learned it, when I learned it, how it related, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Lately, it's been hard because I, I you know, I, I, I don't want to be responsible for these people. I don't want, want to be responsible for them because I understand how malignant their souls are and that they don't see it that way. But I understand who they are deep, deep, deep in their quantum selves because I understand there is a quantum self and it is all the information that you have collapsed all of your observer, all of the observing you've done since you first opened your eyes and started collapsing wave functions, these make up your quantum being. And there is no hiding that information because it is always stored in perfection within your microtubule system from the day you're born until the day you die. I've been referring people to Hammeroff and Penrose some people have actually went and looked and came to the same conclusion I did, that what they're talking about is the human soul existing after death. And if what I have been saying, I have been saying this for many years, and now I, ha I hear I have backup from a fucking Nobel Prize winner, that what I have been saying this whole time about quantum mechanics and the human soul is actually true. Great satisfaction. I cannot tell you how happy that makes me feel inside that I've been informing people correctly all of this time. I know that I was given all these answers when I was there because I asked the questions. But like an article I read on a near-death experience the other day, they told this woman, you will remember what you need to remember when you need to remember it. <laughs> so, so awesome. I don't know if I copied that or not. I take a lot of notes. God, I take a lot of notes. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of notes. New note? Nope. Nope. Nope, I don't. I didn't. Normally I do, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, well. It's just what I'm supposed to do. Sometimes it's frustrating. I'd li I like to come on here and get my therapy session in. 
We never know how much time we have here on this planet. And I'm going to do what I'm doing right now, right up to my last fucking minute if I can. I've been living on borrowed time. I've been living on borrowed time for well over 60 years, 65 years, borrowed time. I died and was saved by a miracle so that I could be here right now feeling rich and happy and sad at the same time. That borrowed time was not a waste. It was learning, coming to conclusions, uh, understanding myself. learning the true nature of the universe and why sentient consciousness is it's the by, it's the end product of this machine we can't comprehend it because we're barely out of the petri dish we cannot comprehend the universe but god can Every instant of every moment, of every thought, of every idea, of every piece of information. She saw the same being of light that I did and the same people surrounding him that I did. And she was told the same thing. You'll remember things when you're meant to remember them. It was a very, very, very heartfelt moment when I read her story. So maybe I will try to write a book again. I always get this feeling that there's no need, that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, where I'm supposed to be doing it. But I also understand how incomplete it is for me to do an hour-long video and to just cover one tiny, 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 tiny little part of it. You know what I mean? How it's affected me, my life, and all the others around me. How it affected others in my life that weren't in my life when I was a little child. The people that I met during my near-death experience were people that are in my life now. And I have, I'm so full of questions. <laughs> Just like I was when I got there. I'm so full of questions still. You know what I mean? But learning, I knew in early 1980 when Hammeroff first did his first fucking talk, when he first wrote his first paper about microtubules, and he, it did, he, he, he didn't know it was microtubules. He had no idea. What he said was he wanted to know where we go when we're put under anesthesia. The disassociative drugs that were given that basically empties the brain of whoever the fuck you are. Yes, there are hard nodes of storage up here, but it's not who and what you are. You're, you recede into your microtubule system. You're disassociated from your body and only your quantum self is existing in your microtubule system. And when I, the day that I read that, I knew I was onto something and it changed my whole search for the reality of my death. Right up until today, I've been learning quantum mechanics and how it relates to my death. Because I knew that I knew instinctually, like they said, you'll know things when you're meant to know them. I was meant to know that. I was meant to know that f for the last 40 years, that this is exactly the path that I was looking for. I knew it as soon as I read it, okay? Hammer off in Penrose, go look at it. It's not going to help you with the stupid people on this planet. The, 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 it's, you have to understand that their souls are what they are. And there's, you can't change that. It's sad. It's very sad that the human race could have so many fucked up animalistic beings as part of its population, but it's true. And that's why we're so far from God in heaven. We're way the hell out on the outer, outer reaches. We made it, but just barely. And it's because of that. I resent it. I resent those people 
but I know I don't hate them any longer. I'm trying to get rid of that hate. When, you know, when I'm like, oh, I hate those fuckers. You know, it's, I understand the word that I'm using really isn't the word that I want to use, but it's the only one that really covers how I feel. I look at them as pathetic. I'm like, why do you, Donald Trump's a great business genius. And I'm like, oh my God, so you've never read anything in your life? So if I told you to, that tomorrow the world's going to fucking end, what are you going to do now? You're going to spend the rest of the day shitting your fucking pants because it's your last day on earth? Because I said tomorrow the world's going to fucking end? That's what it sounds like to me. When you say Donald Trump's a fucking supreme businessman. Because I understand how stupid you are and how ignorant you are and that you've never read a single fucking thing because you don't want to read about it. You don't want to know the truth. You want to believe what you want to believe because it serves your needs. And so really, I just, I feel sympathetic in some ways for these people. It feels really sad because I know what they're going to go through when they die. I understand that their cleansing and cleaning process is going to be very hard. Who knows how many people they affected negatively. Okay. Thank you for the therapy session. I always appreciate it.